Hmm. You see it right through the window? There's a weed. It's gotta be like four and a half feet tall. How have I not seen that? All I've done this week is water. It has been so hot outside. Triple digits, multiple days, had some plants I moved around to get them out of the sun. But I thought since I'm inside, I'd start from here. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Have a lull in the warm front that's been moving through here. So thought this would be the time to go ahead and film a garden tour. Look at this view. Isn't that great? <laughs> it's beautiful. Quick Toby update. I know I didn't say much about him in the last video. He's doing very well. So that is shocked by how quickly he's healing. That mass they pulled off of him was so big and it's only been a week. As of today, he's going in this afternoon to get his stitches out. Well, probably to get his stitches out. They're going to look at him again. He's been going in every 48 hours ish for checkups and he's doing very well. He's been getting, I won't, it's so hot that the door keeps swelling shut and then pull the entire door that way. And then here we go. We can go outside now. You good boy. I know that was weird. I get it. You coming, Toby? Toby, you coming? No? All right. No, that's not Toby being sad. That's just Toby being Toby. He's 14 and he's never really been all that active. Anyways, hi, Kitson. Got rugs all over the place. Give him some grip so he can walk around more easily. Anyways, yeah, garden tour time. I should do some cleaning up first. I just came straight outside. I should probably put some stuff away. It, yeah, time for a garden tour. <laughs> Try that again. Hoses were all over the place. Had the gorilla cart out here in the middle of a lot of projects, getting pots glued back together and pool stuff. I have some, well, one, I got this begonia over here that is ready for a repot, but it's just been too hot. So I moved it over here to the shade under the umbrella. That is the double dot that I got from someone on Etsy, probably green escape last winter. Right now, this time of year, this is in the peak or maybe just past the peak. I generally say the peak is when the gingers are blooming and they're pretty much done blooming. They're gonna keep putting up some more flowers though, because there's some fresh stocks that are coming up in here. The view over here was fantastic this year. When you come out the door like this and you stand over here, oh, it's so pretty with the gingers and the trunk of the palm trees and these dichondra. I mean, come on, look at these things. They have easily doubled, if not tripled in size. I wanna say it was probably dangling to about here when I got this about a month ago. Yeah, really, really big. They're all doing really well. When I got these dichondra, one of my concerns was that I was going to overlove them. That's generally my downfall with dichondra is that I just want to water them like I do everything else, which is one of the reasons I got them was because they were paired up with vinca. And I was like, well, that's a perfect pairing. These are both plants that aren't going to want a ton of water. They're going to be OK with drying out some. And I can use the vinca as my indicator for when I need to come in and give them water. So that's what I've been doing. When the vinca look like they're starting to droop a little bit, then I go in and give them some water. And that's been working out really, really well. I can't even imagine how big these are going to be or how long they're going to be by season's end. And that's insane. Look at, I mean, it's from here all the way up there. That's an insane amount of dichondra. They have also been getting fertilized a lot. Whenever I water out here by hand, well, not whenever I water, for the most part, when I water out here, everything runs through a fertilizer injector that puts it out about an ounce per gallon, which is a lower dose, but it's still enough. So pretty much every time they get watered, they're getting fertilizer. That was something I wasn't sure if that would be okay for them. Dichondra, you know, you don't want to overdo it, but at an ounce per gallon, about four or five times a week, something like that, it's been working out. I came back here thinking you'd be able to see them, but the angle of the sun, you can't see them. But when the sun is shifted and there's more shade out here, you can see them. They just glow, not glow, but you know, they reflect nicely, especially at nighttime. Love these hanging baskets. Definitely doing this again next year. I'll probably just go ahead and make them myself, although it's actually cheaper to buy them. I think these were 15 bucks a pop because they were on sale. Yeah, it costs a lot more than that to make them because I think that there's like one, two, three, there's about four or five of the dichondra in each one of these containers, that alone looking at least 20 bucks. So, but they didn't have them at the nurseries until what was it, mid July when I picked these up? I don't wanna wait till mid July for the hanging baskets. So I'll make them again next, I don't even need, it's not the end of the year, but yeah, we're gonna see how those do. Maybe overwinter them inside. Everything else out here has been doing 
fairly well. It's just, it's been so hot. That'll be a broken record. I'll keep saying it. That I haven't been doing much upkeep. I've been mostly inside that and the Toby situation. The first four days after his surgery, he needed a good amount of attention. He just didn't want to be left alone. I think he was, you know, he's freaked out. He was in pain and confused. He's old. There's that weed. Got the weed. That's what we we're looking at through the window in there. So yeah, right now I've been mostly in watering, some pruning when I see it, when it needs to be done, pulling the occasional weed and uh, pest control. This is the time of year when the spider mites and the mealybugs really just start to take off. So I've been making that almost a daily routine, walking around, checking for pests and spraying wherever I need to. Have a little bit of wind damage back here on the bananas, some broken leaves. These haven't gotten as big this year, and I'm just going to assume that that's because, well, one, the weather was wonky, and also I didn't hook drip up to them. I don't have drip in this bed like I used to. I never set it up. I've just been letting the sprinklers do their thing, and apparently this is what you get when you don't run drip straight to the bananas. Can't say I'm all that surprised by that. We know bananas love water. Just figured they'd be getting enough. I have been using a uh, tripod sprinkler that I set up right here and another one that I set up down there or it's the same one I just move it down over there about two or three times a week to make sure everything's getting a heavy soak but I still I just that's just not quite enough the heptacodium in here is blooming earlier than I thought it would much earlier which is nice the flowers are cute I suppose they're kind of reminding me of tiny little Hoyas can you see them in there they're very pretty there's a very light, sweet fragrance to them. The pollinators absolutely love them. Right now, the heptacodium is at an awkward size, and I don't like it. <laughs> Every time I look over here, I just think it looks like a giant weed. But in a couple of years, this will be taller. I think I say this in every garden tour. It'll have a nice vase shape to it, and I'll be able to thin it out in the middle and be able to look through it, through the window, instead of having that view blocked. But it's as far as it goes, I guess, oh, ultimately, I really do like it for a lot of reasons, mainly that it holds onto its foliage for a long time. So it didn't defoliate last year until January and it flushes back out earlier than everything else. So in the winter or early spring, late winter, when everything else is dead and there's nothing else out here, dormant, I should say, not dead, that has some green on it. And that's a nice trade off. But I do keep going over ideas in my head about other things that I could put there just because it's been, I, just, I don't I don't like the unruly appearance, but in a few years that should become better just need some more pruning and some more time i should be talking about the things that wilt down first because i did not water before filming it takes a few hours to come out and water and then in a few hours it's just gonna be too hot i'm not gonna want to do it so <laughs> should talk about those things first the sun patient that's over here underneath the areca palm which is looking wonderful love this areca palm very nice beautiful palm tree it is finally now that it's september starting to flower I'm not messing with the uh, orange variegated sun impatience next year. Some of y'all had told me over the last few years that they weren't doing anything for you, but that it hadn't been my experience. But here we are. It's my experience now. I see what everybody's been talking about. It's just really weak plants. They need to do something about that. I know they released what they called the improved variety this year. Which these weren't labeled that. But from people who I've talked to who are growing the improved variety, they're still kind of just bleh. They're not doing much. And if I like the foliage more, I wouldn't care, but it's an impatient. I put it there because I wanted that orange and I wanted that variegation and it is, it's starting to flower. So that's good. But I would prefer just the regular tropical rose, which is the pink version of this. Never have any issues with that. So that's what I'll be sticking with next year. The plants that I have over here are mostly things that need to be transplanted or moved. So I have some little Banwai Red Curcumas down there that I started from the corms not too long ago an offshoot from a Colocasia that's I don't really think enjoyed the heat. That's why I have them right here front and center so I can remember that these are little TLC plants that I need to be doing something with. These over here are plants that were back here in the rehab area, the tortoise garden. This is a spot that gets a lot of shade. There are multiple sprinklers around here, so I don't have to rely on myself to make sure everything is staying consistently moist. I know that they're getting watered, so that's where I was keeping these Vichias the Vichia palms that I got in a video a couple of months ago. They sent them dug up. It looked like they were field dug with barely any roots on them. And they almost completely defoliated. I think that they held on to, what, one frond each? 
maybe one and a half on this one. Well, that's actually pretty good. The whole point of the story there is they've started to flush back out. So got a nice new leaf on there. Nice new leaf on this one and a spear that is actively growing on each one and actively like quickly growing, putting up new growth. So I decided that it was time to go ahead and pull them out from the little rehab garden, move them to a spot where they can get some more sun. So I'd really like to get that growth going more quickly. They're getting knocked around though. So I do need to find their spot where I'm gonna keep them for the rest of the year and put some stakes in them. Just want their growth to be nice and straight. Actually, I don't really care if they grow at an angle but it's gonna look weird for a few years, right? They have to get to a certain size until you start to see that curvature in the trunk. Uh, over here, this is the, uh, not Flaming Torch, Tahitian Flame, Hidikium. And I just, my butt, big booty knocking things over. Hidikium, yeah, the Tahitian Flame. I potted this up from, it was just a little rhizome that had really gone downhill last winter. I overwintered this one inside and it wasn't looking great, but I got it repotted back in May and it has just taken off. It's doing great. So I have that sitting over here just because it is time to bump it up into a much larger container. It's filled that one out and it's, I hope it flowers. I've been growing the Tahitian flames for years, but I have yet to get them to flower and it would be nice. I mean, it has the size on it. Look at that variegation. Isn't that beautiful? I love when you get the tricolor variegation. You have multiple tones of green and various shades of white. This right here, feels like it's swelling up with an inflorescence. So hopefully we'll get something. If not, it's not the end of the world, but it's just a nice orange flower, similar to what you all saw back from some of my other gingers. I'm just happy that it's so vigorous. I would like to be able to get this to be vigorous enough that I can start dividing on it. I'm putting some out in the garden because I have gotten this one to overwinter here. 6B, 7A, I forgot to do the whole thing. Hi, St. Louis, 6B, 7A. All the big palms and things go to a greenhouse facility during the winter time. The ones that don't fit in the house. I have some hardy palms in the ground. Hopefully I'll remember to talk about them, but everything else, yeah, it goes away for winter or into the garage, the growth space. Eight years, I think I'd remember to do that at the beginning of every video, but never do. Yeah, it's looking good. The ones that I have tried to overwinter come back for me with a good amount of mulch, not a lot of vigor to them, but I think that's partially just the spot I've been trialing them out in. So I would like for this to get enough size on it that I can really, really put some nice big rhizomes in the ground and see what they'll do. As it is now, they're not the easiest ginger to come by. They're not by any means rare, but most places in general just don't sell Hidikiums, period. The butterfly gingers, Plant Delights is my favorite source for them. Talk about that a lot on the channel. Ooh, that's a good spot. Look at that. Lots of color on that leaf. When I do find them, it's generally just a tiny little start. Terra Nova used to sell them for a while. Maybe they'll start again someday, but as it is now, I don't ever see them for sale at least not at a size that I find worthy to purchase, especially when I already have one that's this big. So this doubles or triples in size, I'm gonna divide that up, move it around some. Don't wanna forget about freckles. I was looking at freckles and just thought, oh yeah, need to make sure to mention Mr. Freckles, Mr. Freckles Croton, or just freckles. I call it Mr. Freckles. It's actually just called the Freckles Croton. Got a nice repot in the spring. Doing well over here. The leaves are still bigger and longer than what they're supposed to be, but I think that that's partially because I've been keeping it more tucked away in the shade. The freckles can take a lot of sun, but since it got that repot and because it's so precious to me, I've just been keeping it over here, but maybe I should find a spot with more sun. It's that time of year now where I have to remind myself that the angle of the sun has shifted, well, the angle of the planet shifted. You know what I mean? And sometimes that means I have to do some moving. Got to scoot some things around because there's not as much sun this time of year back here because I, I live at the bottom of a hill. There's big trees and things and, and the sun's more direct up above. By about two in the afternoon there's just shade everywhere so maybe I'll move the uh, freckles. I might appreciate that. Over here the deck planters. These are looking great. I'm so glad that I redid these. So this is something that's changed from the last garden tour. These were planted up with various vinca and some wave petunias that just really weren't looking good at all. I didn't like how those wave petunias were performing. And uh, the, what else? There were begonias in here, red dragonwing begonias and assorted caladiums I just planted from bulbs. I didn't like how they looked. I gave it time. I made sure to well, give myself a, a, a step back <laughs> before doing anything drastic. And then I just snapped and said, no, I can't take it. They look terrible. I pulled them apart and started these over. The U's stay in the middle. The U's will be in here all year. That's the whole point of them is to have some evergreens 
out here during the winter time to add some color. But the annuals just looked bad. So I popped in some of the compact hot pink sunfacians, a strobilanthes, Persian shields, which I love. Such beautiful plants. Look at those leaves. Look at them. Look, I just love it. Such a nice plant. And then Pakistakis lutea over here on the side of each one. The Pakistakis I put in there largely just because I was at a nursery out here called Plant Haven and they were buy one, get one. So they ended up being like three bucks a pop. I'm like, well, that seems like a great deal. So there's two of those in each one of these containers and the, the Creeping Jenny coming over the front. It's just a more clean look. It was just, it was looking so weedy and messy the way it was set up before. I really do like this a lot more. The Pakistakis are doing well. When I planted these up, I mentioned that I thought maybe I should prune them back. They tend to look better if you give them a cut back when you just have a few little like two growths coming out, which is what these were. But I just wasn't sure about it because of the timing and I wasn't sure how the angle of the sun change was going to affect their growth. But I went ahead and I did it, gave them a 50% cut back and they have bushed out very nicely. They're op opening up new flowers and looking pretty good. And it works out here because I have the Pakistakis over here underneath the queen palm, a much larger one. When I say Pakistakis, I'm referring to the golden shrimp plant, sometimes called lollipop plant. There's this one over here, which you can, I need to, need to move this. I actually think I'm going to move everything that's open. No, get, don't do that. Let's talk about the Pakistakis. And then I also have, you'll see them better in a little bit, but down here underneath the hydrangea planters, have them down there. So it made sense for that to be the plant that I underplant these with because it brings that yellow and that nice, fun, tropical flower shape all the way around. The pollinators have really been enjoying them, too. I still have two of the Redemptions, or I guess I have three of them. Uh, I think I talked about it in the last garden tour. I'm just, I'm not a fan. I don't like the way they look. I understand why people do like them, though. It is a really cool looking color, Casey, but I just, I don't know. I'm more of a Maui gold or lime zingers. Anthosum. I think I'm just more into the lighter greens than I am the darker foliage, unless it's a shiny dark. I like a shiny dark. The black coral over here, beautiful. Very beautiful, look at that shine. It's like an oil slick. The sapphire geckos from Brian's Botanical, beautiful. But the Redemption, I don't know. It's just not doing it for me. I won't be planting these next year. And I've actually been chomping at the bit, <laughs> restraining myself from ripping these out as well. But I wanted to give them a fair shot and try and grow them out for the rest of the season. And we'll just, we'll just see. I'm just gonna suck it up and deal with it. So I know if I were to pull those out, it's going to feel really bare to be able to see right through this gap right here. So they can just stay. This is where they're going to hang out for now. And I'm going to have to get used to it. Oh, that variegated sea hibiscus. I always forget to talk about this one. There it is. It was on the struggle bus for a little bit. It was getting really hot and that thing like so much water, but it's looking better now. I don't think much of anything has changed over here. The seminal pink hibiscus has just been growing and blooming like a champ. Uh-oh, camera's about to overheat. Been doing great. That's what I was saying. Camera overheated. Not bad. 16 minutes. That's a big improvement from the video that came out Wednesday. I had to stop about every minute and a half to two minutes to cool the camera off for Wednesday's video. Looking good. I've been sticking with that new hibiscus fertilizer, and it seems to be working really well. And also when I water, I'm using that petunia feed which the hibiscus seem to enjoy. Can I just snap it out of there? It's not just gonna just pull it. There we go. I know that seemed aggressive because it was. I didn't feel like getting my snippers. Things have been blooming like a champ. Almost all the hibiscus have this one down here. One of the trade wind hibiscus. Don't remember the name, but I love the orange that's on there. I have a few coconuts out here that have been doing OK. They really respond well to the heat. So while everything else out here during those triple digit temps was just multi and sad looking. The coconuts were like, yeah, yeah, I like this. Go ahead and give me some more heat and start pushing up new spears. They seem to be doing better than they were when I moved them out here a few months ago. Looks like this Adenidia has a piece of crown shaft that's ready to come off. Is that ready? I could wait, but you know, just the satisfaction for the video. Go ahead and take that off. Look at that. Oh, love a fresh ring and Turbo loves a palm sheath. There you go. Nice catch, Turbs down here <laughs> where I <laughs> toss the hose so it wouldn't be in frame for everything on the patio. This is the new shade garden area. Just started working on this a couple weeks ago. And while well, some of you may not like the redundancy, there are some people who just tune in for the garden tours. So there's an update. The space 
got a very heavy layer of mulch about eight to ten inches on this back end perimeter that's helped raise it up get things more level in here i'm probably going to come in and do a wall of some sort with rock or stone to help lift it up and make it even more even still waiting for plants to come in the mail I had a huge order, or have a huge order, from Plant Delights that's supposed to have shipped out a few days ago, but I never got a notification from them. They're very good about notifying you. So I assume that they just are delaying the shipment because of the heat, which is fine. I actually appreciate that. Everything would have showed up working pretty bad if they had shipped them out during the triple digit temps. Once everything's here, I'm going to escape this up, have some cool stuff coming in. I want this to be an area where I can play with some part shade to shade plants and things that are different. You know, maybe some fun hostas. I don't know if that sounds boring, but I love a hosta. And uh, voodoo lilies. So there are some amorphophallus that are coming in and some interesting ferns. So things that are variants of other... Oh, good. I thought he was about to poop. You just chilling? Good. I love when I'm filming a video and the dog ends up squatting and pooping right in the background. Yeah, hopefully some nice fun varieties of plants, you know, Neat ferns, the acanthus, the, oh, limelight prime. Yes, that's who this is. This is new. It's doing okay. I should have given this a prune when it got planted. When you plant a panicle hydrangea, if you plant them early enough in the season and you cut them in half, you'll get about double the growth on them. But hold on, plain. I didn't do that. So it ended up just staying pretty much the exact same size that it was when I brought it home and has put out flower heads. The limelight prime is supposed to be smaller than the regular limelight, which can get absolutely massive. I think these will go four and a half to six feet, something along those lines. And they have a more sturdy panicle that stands upright, not going to flop over. And they pink up much faster and bloom earlier in the season than the regular limelights do. This thing had buds on it before any of my other panicle hydrangeas. The flowers are absolutely <laughs> pathetic though aren't they I mean, it's not pathetic but i just this is there's not much to this i'm used to the strawberry vanillas which you'll see in a few minutes that just have massive mop heads on them or cone heads but that comes at a cost too right those weep down this doesn't weep down i'm gonna have to give that plant this one a couple more years let it get bigger and see if the flowers get bigger on them it's okay if they don't but it would be nice if they were larger have a new plant over here, hanging out, Carolina Allspice, just chilling in the shade. Oh, the needle palms, I forgot to mention. Yeah, needle palms, they're looking great. I always forget to talk about the hardy palms. Doing very well. Been using the Perfect Palm Fertilizer on them this year, and uh, they seem to be responding well. Got a lot of nice green growth coming out of them. These things have gotten absolutely huge. I would say they're both, like, to the very tip, top, about six feet. And that's it's so rewarding. It takes such a long time. How did th another one? My goodness, I'm missing weeds all over the place. Yeah, that's such a big deal because needle palms grow like snails, especially the further north you go. It's hard to imagine that these were just in seven gallon pots like, <laughs> like 12, 15 years ago. Just set that right there for now. The reason that I even have the needle palms here is because this spot was always a challenge to grow things in. I've had azaleas here, rhododendrons, boxwoods, holly shrubs, and just nothing worked out. And that was because this spot gets a good amount of shade during the summertime. But then during winter, it is just blasting baking sun. Or no, winter. Did I say that right? Yeah, winter, lots of sun because the leaves are off the tree. Summer, shade. And nothing else could take it. And go figure the plants that have done the best and thrived. Needle palms. Which I, has me thinking I may end up putting some of those over here. I had mentioned that I probably wouldn't do that just because I already have so many plants to protect. But it's the kind of the same conundrum. If I put evergreen shrubs over here that are going to tolerate the shade during the summer, then a lot of them are going to fry during the winter when there's just tons of sun over here and really strong winds. So I may toss some small ones in over here. I don't know. We will see. I have some fun plants coming uh, that I didn't mention. I know I already mentioned the Amorphophallus that's coming in. And I, uh, uh, what is it? A banana. Nucella laziocarpa. I was thinking about that one because the bananas over here got too big. I cut this one down. <laughs> that was just yesterday. It'll be in Wednesday's videos. Yes, they do. 
They're so vigorous. That's why I love bananas. I think at some point, I don't remember when, but at some point in time over the last few years, I stuck a pup from other bananas over here. And uh, I, I shouldn't have done that. They're too big. They don't fit in the spot. The one that was right here was completely blocking everything. So that's why I cut that one down. This spot would be a good spot for a smaller banana, like the Musella, the Lazio Carpa, or one of the Velutinas, Dwarf Orinoco. Well, Dwarf Orinoco might be too big. The Velutinas sometimes have more of an upright habit to them. Sometimes they'll hold their waves up a little bit higher, and that's why it might work for a narrow spot. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to be putting bananas over here. Maybe a Pharaoh's Dream. I'd like to put one of the Pharaoh's Dream Colocasians over there. You'll see that one in a few minutes. The Lazio Carpa, though, is a banana that grows in the appearance of more of a shrub and they stay much lower this far north, 6B, 7A. Rarely, rarely will get bigger than maybe five feet during the growing season. They are super cold hardy as far as bananas go. I'd say they rival the Bajus. They actually, I think they might be more hardy than the Bajus. That's just my experience. I have had them in containers over winter outside in 6B when we had snow and ice. And when I say 6B, 7A, you have to take that with a grain of salt. It drops below zero here every single year, and they survived in a container. I've never had a Baju survive in a container with one of our winters before. But the, anyways, the neat thing about them is that they almost have a bird of paradise effect. Like that could be a dupe if you just want those long paddle shaped leaves in the garden, then that's what they'll give you. And they have really pretty flowers on them. You're more likely to get a flower or an inflorescence, I should say, out of those than you are out of a baju when you're further north because they have a shorter season that they need. They put up really big yellow flowers. I think they're also sometimes called the yellow lotus banana, maybe? Does that sound like a thing? I think it is. Uh, yeah, so probably going to put one of those over there. Need to get the rest of these bananas out of here. The coconut <laughs> is just hanging out here. This is with those vichias over there in the, the rehab garden area and it has put up two new fronds. So I said, OK, it's time to get you moved and get you into a new spot. But I also wanted to wait for the heat to go away. So I moved it over there where we get a little bit more sun, but still be near a sprinkler. And hopefully I think in the next week or so the heat's supposed to break and things are supposed to be more pleasant for planting and moving plants around and repotting. That's a big part of what I need to do right now is a lot of repotting, tons of it. I have the sun impatient over here that I think I just need to move. It's not getting a sun anymore since the angle of the sun has shifted. Some bromeliads back here that are not looking great. But if y'all remember, these spent like four and a half to five weeks, something like that in the mail. I think they got lost in transit, so they showed up looking pretty bad. These are the Donnas, and it's fine. It just is what it is. The windmill palm, so happy. I'm so glad that I repotted this one this year. I thought about putting it off for one more year just because those big pots are so incredibly expensive. And, uh, you know, there's been some other <laughs> expensive things going on this year, mainly like completely repaving the patio and the furniture and everything. But I ended up finding a fairly good deal on the big pot. It was like 140, which for a 32 inch, I think is what that is. That's a very good price. It's just been throwing up new fronds left and right. It's so happy in this new container. It does take an eternity to water this thing <laughs> like a long, long time. I would just put the hose in it at this point and walk away for about three, four minutes, something like that. And that's how it takes till so the water starts coming out. Once this takes root, it won't take anywhere near as long for it to do its thing. Are you okay? What are you doing? Are you just pondering? It's a good spot for pondering. You look like you're very good at it. Over here, this is all new. Well, <laughs> kind of. The video that came out right before this one is me setting the spot up, so I won't get too redundant here. I tossed in a fountain trying to get the colors balanced out with things I have around, trying to not buy too much, but that's going to be a challenge because I would like to get maybe another lantern, but we'll see about that. Main thing is this orchid arrangement. Isn't it pretty? I forgot to mention when I did the video, <laughs> forgot to talk about what type of Phalaenopsis these are. So that might be something people wanted to know. Miss Golden Sweet. That's what that is. I think I got these from Norman's Orchids online. They have a good selection. A good price. I think this is worth $15.99 or $16.99 a pop. Just something I, I can't believe I didn't talk about that in the video. So these orchid arrangements, if you get them from a florist, unbelievably expensive, like crazy expensive. And that should have been the whole point of the video was you can do this for cheap. That's just a bowl that I think I got from Target years ago for like 12 bucks. How much is sheet moss? Like $6 worth to put around there. And then 
$45 for the three orchids. But still, you have a living arrangement and the orchids, they'll stay in bloom for months if you get the right types. And oh, you need four of them too. But still, I'm, I'm not gonna do the math. Okay, I'll do the math, hold on. I'm just gonna say 75 bucks. And that was, I rounded up, grossly rounded up on everything. That's a, not a bad deal for something that's this large, has this much of an impact, and it would look even better if you had fresh sheet moss that was nice and green, or you could use the pillow moss that you tuck in between everything, or the little lichen puffs. So many fun things you can do with them. I've seen people take um, cuttings from their sedums, from their donkey tail, burrow's tails, and stick those and let those drape over the sides. That looks really cool. You get months and months of flowers out of them. That was my, that was my point. People are charging like, 250 to $500 for these things at floral shops. I didn't know that until I was editing that video and uh, I Googled what this is even called. Cause I was like, I knew there was a name, but I wasn't sure what it was. I need to make sure to have the right name for the title. And apparently the most common name for this is Orchid Centerpiece Bowl. Okay. That was just my dyslexia doing its thing. So I kept calling it like Centerpiece Orchid or something like that. But when I did that, I was seeing how much they cost. I was like, oh my gosh. That's insane. Absolutely nuts for something so easy to put together. Lodi is looking good. Is that too abrupt? It's time to move on. We talked about that long enough. I'm waiting for things to cool down so it can get a repot. I was thinking about maybe repotting the uh, cordelins back here. Cordelines, cordelines. The Fredacasas. These are the Harlequins. They're just doing so freaking well out here. I don't really want to mess with them. Getting lots of growth out of them. They're so colorful. But I'm thinking about maybe overwintering them in the grow space. That's a big maybe, because these things suck in the grow space. Every mealy bug that could ever exist shows up on these things. Spider mites, they're just pest magnets, so I really don't want to overwinter them, but they're so pretty. So it's something I'm thinking about, and I, what I might actually do is not even put them in the grow space. I might just stick them in my basement in a cooler spot and just splash a little water on them like once a month. And then in the springtime, move them up to the grow space, make sure they stay sprayed down and everything and let them flush back out. Cause they'll defoliate for the most part when I do that. But that usually works out better for me than trying to keep them going cause the pests get on them and then I just get rid of them. I just throw them away because it's just too much. I don't want to have to spray nonstop. They're harder to spray because of, well, just the nature of their growth. It's hard to get into all those nooks and crannies when you're in a confined space inside and you have to be very mindful of not getting the neem or whatever I'm using into the pond that's in there because it would kill the fish, right? It makes it more difficult. I had space to set up a little grow tent inside the grow space for plants like this and some of the other pest magnets, then I would do that. I think it would work out really well. I would just have to remember to bug bomb it <laughs> like once a month and problem solved, but can't do that is, you know, chemicals. Don't want that around anything that could be onto the humans or come in the house and affect the parrot. Heliconia has been doing well. Chaconiana, have a bunch of these. I had some on order from Nature Hills. It's been two and a half months, still hasn't shown up. So I need to remember to email them and tell them to give me my money because I'm, I'm over it. I don't want them anymore. It's pretty late in the season. Their excuse was that it was too hot, which yeah, the last few days it's been too hot and I don't know where they're shipping them out from. I assume North Carolina, South Carolina, I think that's where the last package had the return on it, the return address that is, but there were plenty of leaks. I've been watching the weather. It has been an unusually cool summer here with the exception of having a few days here and there of unbelievably hot weather. <laughs> Not unbelievably, it's pretty typical St. Louis summer heat, just it's been cooler in between though. And there are days, a couple of weeks ago where I was out here in hoodie and pants. So it was chilly, it was like in the 60s. Very unusual, so I, I guess it's not the same wherever they're shipping them from. I think they just forgot. The problem is every time I email them, I get an automated response that says, yo, you need to check this and check this and check this. And it's all the things about like making sure you read the FAQs before emailing them. I'm like, well, I'm emailing you because your FAQ isn't covering the fact that I think y'all just forgot about my plants and you owe me 200 bucks. No, we'll see about that. Just need to get in touch with them. I have been loving the way these big bromeliads are looking out here this year. Those I will try and move in. I keep talking about things as if this is the last garden tour. It's not, I need to roll that back. They're looking good. I have a cord running through here that got, I had to redo a bunch of the wiring. That sounds much more technical than it is. I had to unplug a bunch of things and set up an outlet outside from behind this cabinet to get that fountain going, it's mother stuff going. Uh, so the cord that goes to the lighting underneath everything got pulled up. I just need to rerun it, move it somewhere else. 
This orchid, this is the sesame. It's so pretty. One of my all time favorite Phalaenopsis. Look at all those spots. Isn't that just a gorgeous orchid? So much color and character. Biophytum, look at it. Looking good. Got a lot of wind on it, the little biophytum that's flowering, which isn't great. Had another cool off like every 16 minutes when we be doing that. Overall, the garden bed itself, things are looking pretty good. Sun and patience have filled out nicely. They're at their peak. I do need to come in and prune back the sweet potato vines. They're coming over the patio more than I would like them to. I'd mentioned when I planted them up that that was going to be something that I would have to remember to do. I kind of like it though, but if it goes much further than this, it's going to bother me. At the same time, I really like having the clean line. Like I bet if I were to come in here and cut this back, I would probably really like how it works. So maybe I'll do that this weekend. I don't know. Nothing much to report over here. I did come in and cut down a ton of the cannas. I don't know if that was in the last garden tour or not. There were just, there were too many. They were coming all the way forward. They were completely blocking the sun out to everything else that's over here. The gingers, they were barely even growing. And the Pharaoh's Dream, which is I think my favorite Colocasia this year, wasn't getting enough sun. So I cut down all the ones that were in the front and I just wanted them back there to mostly block the siding, really. It's nice to look at and everything, but I want to be able to see out the window and everything. They were just too much. So I'm going to have to dig a bunch of those rhizomes in the springtime when they're starting to pop up and move them around. The Pharaoh's Dream, it is a dream. I love this plant. It has beautiful leaves on it. It's taking longer to get the variegation on it that I would like, but it looks like its newest leaf, which is back here, is going to have really nice stripage on it. Isn't that just beautiful? I have another one. They're everywhere. Isn't it just beautiful? So when I planted this up, it was just a tiny little plant. They sent me two of them. Oh, I have a lot to report on that, by the way. They sent me two because the ones they had were really small. These are from Brian's Botanical and they're priced. I think they're 80 or 100 bucks. But the selling point on them is, aside from just being a beautiful Colocasia, is that they're supposed to be extremely cold hardy. They're thinking these are going to be good for zone six, which I can see. They look an awful lot like they have bikini teeny genetics, don't they? These are the bikini teenies right next to them. Looking pretty similar in growth habit. These are a lighter green with that beautiful purpley pink in the middle that comes down to a creamy yellow. And then as the leaves age <laughs> or when the plant gets more mature, that variegation and the striping on the veins gets a lot heavier and they have a nice cup shape to them. I guess that's what we'd call that. It's a very unique leaf shape for what would be a cold hardy colocasia. It's just everything about them I love and they are vigorous. There's lots of little babies coming out from the bottom which is what me thinks, what me thinks, it's what makes me think that there's probably Bikini Teeny genes in there because Bikini Teeny also is a very vigorous spreader. It's maybe not something for people where this is, you have a more mild climate and it could take over. I don't know, gotta give that a few more years. The whole point there though, is that I ordered two of them because I wanted to put one over here and then I wanted to put another one over in this garden area by the window down here this spot. I wanted one centered right in front of that window. I haven't planted it yet because this entire space is going to get gutted out and cleaned up. There's a bunch of old tubing and piping from the old irrigation system that I got to get lifted out. It's going to be a big project getting all that done. So basically have to dig this whole spot out. Right now it's about a foot higher than the patio and I need to dig it out to a few inches below and get all that pipe and stuff removed. But one that's done, I want one of those Ferris dreams right in front of this window and then, you know, other annuals and perennials and things planted in front of it. It's a very narrow spot, but you saw the growth habit on that. It's very upright. So I think that that's a good plant to put in that spot. The problem is the two that they sent me, the bonus they sent me because they were so small, which is nice of them to do that. I don't want to complain, you know, where they say don't bite a gift horse in the mouth. Don't look when you don't bite a horse, period. Right. That was the right saying. Here's the other one they sent me and uh, I went to plant this one and it was labeled as Red Pharaoh's Mask, which is a totally different plant. I was pretty bummed about that because I was excited that they had sent me two of them and I had no interest in the Red Pharaoh's Mask. It's just it's not a plant that appeals to me, at least not right now. But now that this is grown, I think it just had the wrong label in it because doesn't this look an awful lot like the Pharaoh's Dream that I just showed you, just a lot smaller. I waited longer to plant this one too. So this one's probably a month to six weeks behind that other one as far as its time in the ground. Uh, nothing about this says Pharaoh's Mask. The Pharaoh's Mask 
has a curled leaf on it. So that's exciting. That's a new discovery. It's something I figured out maybe a week or two ago. So I've been saying this whole time that they sent me the wrong ones. They didn't. It's just the wrong label. So I do have that extra over there that I will be moving down into that spot. I'm looking forward to some more leaves coming up that have the variegation that this one's showing. And this leaf hasn't opened up all the way. So just imagine when that's fully open and it's fully colored up. To me, they look like, uh, well, kind of like a Gloriosum philodendron, but hardy into zone six. That's insane. I'm so excited about that. The only other thing that's new over here, I have some slim orange, slims orange hedikiums over here that I would just planted last fall because I wanted to try them out for that same spot I was talking about for the Pharaoh's Dream, a very narrow bed. And I was like, well, this is a tiny little hedikium that might look good there. And now that I've grown it out for a season, I don't know. I don't think I really care for it. So I have to give it a few more weeks, let them flower and see if I like them to have flowers on them. I still think that they will sprawl out over the patio in that narrow bed. But I mean, they're fine over here and I can always find a different spot for them or give them away end up not liking them. I just, I needed a season to grow them out and see what I thought. And uh, they're kind of weedy looking, I think, which I guess Hedekiums in general are kind of weedy looking, but they don't hang down as much. No, I don't, actually, I don't think weedy looking is the right way to describe a Hedekium. Jeez, they look so thirsty. I got, gave them a huge drink yesterday. But they're absolutely desiccated. Need to come back over there with the hose and give everything a good watering. Dune grass looking good. The sun's shifted, right? So they're a little bit more wilty. They're not quite as high as they were a few weeks ago, but I love that blue dune grass. It's always so pretty. Here's an impressive plant. I'm gonna say this is the surprise plant of the year. I was not thinking I was gonna like this. This is called Acacia Diamond Head. It's, this thing's freaking huge. Everything I had read about them said four feet, but that's well over six feet high. All that the ground's about a foot and a half high right there. I'd say five foot. It's much taller than me and it's up there growing on a mound. I wish it was green though. That's the thing. It, this does have shiny green foliage. I mentioned that when it's or not shiny green, shiny black foliage, dark foliage. As long as it has gloss, I do like it more than I do the redemption, but it just disappears into the background because it's a shadier location. Overall, I mean, that doesn't matter when you get up close, you go, wow. That is a beautiful plant. There's so much color, even though it's a dark leaf. When you're standing here in person, you can see all the different various shades of green and bronze. It's really a nice looking colocasia. And that was something that I had talked about when I did some rearranging over here. I don't know if that was in the last garden tour or not, but I had the black coral right there, black coral colocasia right here where this lutea is. And it just drove me nuts. It was too dark. I like to have the pops of green out here. The, maybe you can see what I'm talking about. If I come around this corner and we look down here at the Alexander Palm, which is just beautiful. Isn't that looking great? You can barely even see that there's a giant colocasia underneath it. Maybe on camera you can. I don't know. It's too sunny. I can't see my screen. But in person, it disappears until you get over there. But that's also kind of fun. You get a big surprise when you walk around the corner. A great big shiny elephant ear. Impatients are coming in nicely. The Zingibers. They're finally starting to take off. I put in new drip around virtually, but I guess about half of the garden. They're responding well to that. I had talked about these in the last few garden tours about how they weren't doing much and I was kind of concerned about them, but uh, they're coming back nice and strong. These are these Zindaber Mayoga white feather. Yes, white feather and silver arrow. I can never remember if they're white feather or dancing crane, but the white feather the variegations on the outside of the leaf and the dancing crane, the variegation stays on this. That's, it doesn't matter. They're looking good. Lots of beautiful color. I need to, I think, come in here and cut some of those rhizomes out and move them around some other spots in the garden. So there's not quite enough sun for them over here. I'm tripping around this hydrangea. So this hydrangea is usually over there on the other side of the steps. So, you know, have them framing the stairs there. But with the heat, I went ahead and I scooted it, gave it a knock back into the shade because you can see what's happening here with all that brown. They're starting to crisp up and I moved them before the heat even got here. I was proactive <laughs> thinking that I had beat it and they weren't going to fry up this year, but they still did even over here in the shade. It's really bizarre. It's just this one and it didn't used to do this. Last year is the first time it ever did this 
and it was after a heat spell, and there's a lot of sun right there, so that's understandable. Understandable? I can under I can understand why. Just try that all over again. I'm talking a lot. Brain stops working when you go on for a long time. But it's still crisped up. And I don't I don't understand why. Because this has been in this container over there in that spot for years. It was never an issue. They haven't been wilting down. They haven't looked thirsty. I don't know. I went ahead and I got these hooked up to drip. And that is... Well, it's not really made a difference with them. They're just staying watered. It's made a difference for me. Because watering down here takes a long time. So now everything from this point all the way down to those Miami planters is on drip. So that's saving me about, oh, say, an hour of watering every day. You can see this one, it has a little bit of brown in there, but not much. And tons and tons and tons of green and pink on this side. I don't know why. Yeah, that one gets more sun, so it makes sense. It's just weird that it's never done this until last year. So it might just be the effect of having a perennial in a pot. You can only pull it off for so many years, and it's been a long time. It would probably be a good idea next year to pull these out of the containers and either move them into the landscaping or give them a heavy prune on top and a root prune and start them over in these containers. That might be what I have to do. I don't know. We will see. But overall, they are still looking really good. Some brown's not going to bother me. They're still beautiful plants. These are the vanilla strawberry panicle hydrangeas. Look at how big the flower heads are on these. So do you see how wide? Only really that one. I can't reach it. It's too far away. But these things, they're absolutely massive. Huge, huge inflorescence on them. But the downside to that is that it makes them droop down. So they hang down because of that. And that's why when I look at that limelight prime on the other side of the yard, I'm like, oh, that's so dinky because this is what I'm used to. But the trade off is the flowers stand upright and they start to pink up earlier in the season. And that's this is the first year that that one's been in the ground. So you've got to give that some more time and see what the flower heads end up looking like on it. These are some of my favorites. I just love them so much. They're so pretty. They start off white, like you saw on the other side, and then they age into this really pretty mauve pink and they keep a little white tip on them. And if you can keep them from getting brown in the heat, they dry very, very, very nicely. If you want to take them inside for arrangements, they'll hold on to more of the greenish tones and the pink tone, but they'll hold on to that for a really long time. Everything they're underplanted with has been doing wonderfully. This is the worst angle to be showing you that. You come over here, you can see everything a lot better. The Pakistaki's Ludia. I love these in here. I'm probably going to do that again next year. And I'll get them planted up earlier than I did next or this year. <laughs> I'm going to plant up earlier next year than I did this year. And then hopefully be able to see a lot more growth out of them. So much color. I love the shape of these. So pretty. The hummingbirds and bees love them too. There's almost always hummingbirds over here on the containers. The petunias, this one doesn't get as much sun, so it's not doing much. But the Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum on the other side, really looking good. These were all planted up pretty late, though, so they're about a third of what I would expect from if I had got them planted up earlier in the season. Monstera's looking good. Not much to report. Just now popping open a new leaf. Real nice one, too. That's some good color on it. This uh, storm knocked it off its pole. So I need to come back here and get it pulled back up. I'm actually thinking it's time to chop this because it's just it wants to go out this way. This is it wants to grow this direction. I would like to straighten it back out. So that's something I should probably do. I just really don't want to do it because it's risky. But I think that if I were to go ahead and chop it and get the base of the stem poked back down in there and put it near drip where it's going to be getting misted by water multiple times a day, it should reroot just fine. It's just such a big old plant that that seems like Oh, such a risk. I would hate for anything bad to happen to it. But look at how much of it is growing all the way out here into the landscaping. This is just so big and it needs definitely needs more space on the pole because well, this is the, clearly isn't working. Laurels and Impatience looking good. These have done a ton of growing in the last month. So much that you can't even see the hydrangeas that I planted behind them, which is fine because the hydrangeas really weren't doing much of anything anyways. Got some flowers on them. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if they've ever been this big before. They're huge, I'm pushing like two and a half feet, just right here in the middle where it's getting the most sun. It tapers down on each end. It's fine, it's colorful, maybe a little bit erratic, but I don't mind it. It adds a lot of character down here, having that pop of color from the impatience. I have a whole bunch of yews over here that need to get planted up on the backside of this berm. 
and then a whole bunch over here that need to get planted up on top of that hill. Just been waiting for the heat to settle. There are some plants I don't like to put in the ground when we're having really erratic temperatures and heat. Use are one of them. Arborvitaes, Thuja in general, just don't like to plant them in the middle of summer. It's probably gonna hold off for a couple more weeks on the use just to be safe. And it's fine, they look good right there, <laughs> that bothered me. Acanthus have been growing really, really well. These were all planted as an experiment. I put them all over the garden, in different locations, see what spots they would do the best. This one right here is just loving life right now. And I think it's because it has a new drip head right by it that's giving it a lot of mist. And since that's been getting that regular water from the drip, stirring up new leaves, like constantly. See, one, two, three, four, like five new leaves. And that's just in like a week and a half. It seems pretty happy. This one over here uh, isn't doing much. There's a weed, probably gonna keep finding those, but it is doing more now that there's drip over here. And I was hand watering these, heavily hand watering them. I did stand there with the hose for a long time. So you want to give them a nice deep soak. Acanthus have really big roots that can run really deep and fill out a big area. So it's important to get them established really, really well if you want them to survive the winter. But uh, I guess it just it's just doesn't compare to what you get from the drip. They're doing a lot better with the drip. The, uh, oh crap. I forgot what these are. Tepelitos, I believe. Hemadurias, I'm pretty sure. I always call them tychospermas. That's not what they are. Doing well, getting new fronds out of them. Last winter's stuff starting to die off. Getting some new growth out of the middle. These were shipped, I say these, there's another one over here. They were shipped to me bare root last fall. And it took them a long time to get going and to establish themselves. But now that they have, they're starting to look very nice. I have my elbow over here, which is starting to get crowded out by this pedicets, pedicetes. Pedicides. I always do that wrong. The butterburrs. It's doing a lot of growing. And look at this. It's going all over the place, swirling around. Looking really nice. Such an easy plant to grow. Don't know why they're so freaking expensive. These man, are they vigorous growers. What, has anything changed over here? Some nice new growth coming out of the variegated macroiza. Looking pretty good. Oh, another acanthus. This one's been doing the best. It's leaf growth hasn't been the best compared to the other acanthus, but it's the only one that's put up a flower. It has had that flower on it for like a month and a half, a really long time. So this area might end up being the winter as far as where I end up putting more because I'd like to have a drift of those acanthus, those really big leaves. And look at from over here, when you look at that, it just looks beautiful. To me, you get kind of a dupe of a bipinatifidum, philodendron sort of, or somatophyllum. This is very shiny. Heavily loved leaves, really nice tropical appearance. These will get a little bit bigger than this too. Not much. That's pretty much the size of a mature leaf. I believe these are the oak leaf, Acanthus mollus. Acanthus mollus are ones where they are hit or miss for me because they do not always like the hot, humid summers. But that one seems to be doing really well. What are you doing? I haven't paid any attention to this one since I pruned on it and did some cleanup and fertilizing it, but that's about it. A little bit of heat damage. Not a little bit, that's a significant amount of heat damage. That triple digit temps, this is a pretty shady spot. There's not much else I can do for it other than just keep it watered. That's, it's fine, it's a parlor palm. It's gonna keep growing and being happy, just has too much heat for it. Okay, the Miami planters, they're looking pretty good. The Neoregelia Yangs that are in the middle, these were in the same shipment with those Donnas that I showed before, the ones were all crisped up. They sat in transit for like four or five weeks. They have recovered so nicely. I don't think there's quite enough sun to really bring out the variegation in them. This one over here has some more color in it. You can see that. Isn't that just a beautiful Neoregelia? I love how those look coming out the middle of these containers, especially when you blend it in with the nice chartreuse green on these canary wing begonias. I love the orange in the back. I just, I really like the Miami planters. They came out great. I wish I'd done a trailer in them. I knew I would have regretted that when I decided not to, but. I, don't know, I just couldn't find what I wanted. I wanted to do some lipsticks over the front. And I never found them. Oh, I did put some Lesnachia in here, though. So I rooted these in a video or started rooting them, cut them off from another plant and said that it was the wrong time of year and it may not end up looking good, but looks like some of them are doing OK. It's really pretty Lesnachia. They have really, oh, it's doing very well. Look at that. That's all new growth. This is just a little nub when I put it in there. So this one seems happy. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? They have really big, shiny, firm leaves on them. I think that might be my favorite 
of the Lismachias out here. Oh, Frydeck. Looks like got a new leaf on it. Oh, they're so pretty. Such a beautiful variegation. So these are on drip now too, which they seem to be appreciating. I was hand watering everything, but there's just, you get something different with drip. It's only been, what, two weeks, I think, that I had these set up onto drip irrigation and just thought everything in here is doubled, if not tripled in size. Even those cuttings that I said probably wouldn't make it because it's too hot to be trying to root cuttings outside. They're looking great. Now, over here, the cuttings aren't doing as much, but they're doing something. They're not dead. So I'd say that's impressive considering the time of year they got potted up. Well, that's probably too much white on there. I'm not going to cut it off, but I probably should. So, look, come on. Look at that. Such a beautiful plant. I love the variegated fried eggs. Much slower to go, to grow, <laughs> to take off than the regular fried eggs, but I'd say it's worth it with the amount of color that you get from them. The Borneo Giant Alocasias. Look at that leaf. Huge, huge leaves. This one over here, it's an absolute beast. Has some wind damage from the storms and everything. That's easily eight feet tall. At least that fence is six foot. So that's probably more like nine feet tall. It just towers above you when you're over there. They're doing so well this year. Another plant that I always forget or would have forgotten to talk about is the Typhonium giganteums. That's what this is. I've had those growing out here in the garden for many, many, many years, but it was just this one right here in this spot. Grows like a champ. This is a very cold hardy voodoo lily, a nice tropical looking aeroid. I planted six more of them last year, and I was saying, I don't remember when, sometime in the last several weeks, I thought that they died. I didn't think they made it through the winter. But then when I was working on the shade garden over here, I started seeing them popping up. That's the problem with plants that don't come up until late June, is that you forget where you put them. So that's what this is. You can see it's got little bulblets that are starting to put up some growth too. These typhoniums don't put up growth generally until late June. This year, they didn't put up anything until late July. And there's another one over here, but it looks like it got taken down by a weed eater. I had someone who did some weed eating for me and it'll come back, it's fine. They were trying to be helpful, I'm not gonna complain. But moral of the story there is, I thought that none of them made it other than the one that was over there. But it looks like three of the six came up. So that's really good. I'm glad because <laughs> otherwise it meant that they had all died and that would have been a big waste of time and money doesn't look like there's anything much happening with these curcumas that I planted up here yet. Uh, they got planted pretty late. Hopefully they'll still flower. These are the Banrai Reds. Uh, I don't know. Just got to give it some time. I'm going to have to lift those in the winter and get them moved around. These are Limelight Punch. Little Lime Punch? I don't know. They're flowering, which is exciting because I've had them in the ground for, I think this is the third year and it's the first time they've actually flowered. So I think they like the drip. The planters up here, these are looking pretty good. The Sun and Patience are finally starting to flower <laughs> and look nice. I like how they droop over the fronts of the pots. Something I've noticed with this Alpinia is that it has some pretty nice, almost unusual size growth. I mean, did you see how big that was compared to Turbo when he walked underneath it? The leaves on this one are absolutely just, they're just massive, fat paddles. I'm not used to that with the Zarembits. Usually I'm used to these, <laughs> these more long skinny leaves like you see on this one and every other variegated Zarembit I've ever grown. But this particular plant, it's putting up the biggest leaves I've ever seen on one that's growing in a pot this far north. When I've seen them in the ground down south and in the Caribbean, I see leaves on them like that, but they're usually much larger <laughs> plants than this. I, don't know, I think it's happy. I'm glad because I maybe talked about it at some point. I know I've been thinking about it, that the variegated Zarumbit gingers, these shell gingers, I was really disappointed on this year. The ones I've seen in the nursery barely had any variegation on. They're kind of ugly compared to what you would normally get. But this one right here is just out of nowhere. It started to shock me with really intense variegation. Like it's come around. I guess it heard me talking about it and decided to go ahead and put on a show. That's beautiful. It's looking good enough that I might take it inside this winter. Oh, we will see about that. Okay, is that better? I think that's better. <laughs> that awkward pause was me 
seeing the flashing thing on the screen telling me that the camera was about to overheat. And it did. Everything else out here is just looking real nice. So that's Bedeza, some Bergii. Look at all those flowers. This is, it's a plant that I do love, but I don't know what to do with it. So this was originally planted over here and I moved it. I've tucked it much further back into the garden bed because I just do not like how much it grows over the patio, but it needs to grow in a spot where it can come over a hill. I think the variety is called Volcano. It has, a, the, you see it, it's a trailing habit to it. I scooted it back. I did the thing. I think it was last year or the year before, and it's still taken up way too much of the patio. In fact, I think it's taken up more of the patio than it did before when it was two feet closer to the edge of the wall, which is good. I mean, it means it's happy. It's growing really well, but I got to do something with it. I'm not going to do that this year, but next year I'm thinking I'm going to dig this up and move it down into the hill garden area where I don't even care if it grows over the wall. I think it'll look beautiful growing over the wall down there. But over here, it would be nice to have the wall opened up and not have this giant plant draping over it. But it is what it is for now. Just need to appreciate it. It is just now starting to do its late summer show. You can see it's covered in buds. Look at all those buds. When this is in full bloom, the bees and butterflies are all over this thing. They are a great plant if you like to give the pollinators something to munch on. And the Thumbergia, the volcano, is an improved variety that's not supposed to be as invasive. And I haven't noticed it spreading at all, and I've been growing this plant for, I want to say, at least 10 years, probably longer than that. And I've never had any runners or anything pop up anywhere, even seedlings. So might be a good option if you're looking for something like that. If you have a hill where you want something to drape over it, this is an awesome plant. But for me in this spot, man, <laughs> I'd like for it to be somewhere else. In fact, that reminds me down here, it's something I hadn't talked about. I cut down a tree. There is a random tree that had jumped over from the neighbor's yard from a few years ago that I didn't even realize was growing in my yard inside this bayberry. I thought it was in their yard until they cut down all their trees and it was still there. I was like, oh, that's on my side of the fence. It was up there, probably like up here. It's a good probably 20 foot tall tree and very skinny branches on it. And it is the messiest thing that I've ever had out here. It was just constantly snowing junk all over the patio. So cut it down, which is always sad to cut down a tree, but it was just too messy. I didn't like it there. And it was making the growth on this bayberry very odd and wonky. I've been pruning this over the years to have a fun arch on it, but I would also like for it to have more growth back there. So when things cool off, this is going to get a very heavy prune from that right here and down, probably. So that won't be over the patio anymore, but that will hopefully encourage a lot more growth from the inside to come up and do what it should be doing, having a nice evergreen shrub over there. That's something that's needed to be done. And the garden looks really good from over here. Man, there's so much color. I love the combination with the sun and patience this year. The, uh, what was it? Purple candy, uh, red candy, and... Uh, Electric orange sun patients. Pretty sure that's what those were. I think. I don't think there's anything left over here that I haven't talked about. Crossandra. I know I mentioned that I liked them. One thing I didn't mention was that I've only deadheaded them once. Just one time. Should be coming in here and doing it more often, but I haven't needed to. Despite not being on top of it, they're still just growing and blooming as much as I've ever seen a crossandra bloom out here. Sometimes they can be tricky for me. And I think that that's because I usually give them way too much sun. They get nice filtered light over there in that spot. Oh, Gassia palms. They're doing OK. I had some loss with a lot of the vinca that were in here during one of the heat spells we had back in July. But what's left has ended up being really vigorous and pretty. So this is the tattoo orange vinca and then the blueberry spark or kawaii blueberry. I think is what that one's called soiree, something like that. I don't know. The planters themselves look good. I like what the rodeos are doing. The palms themself, themselves themselves uh, <laughs> are doing really well this year. Much better than last year. They have some damage, heat damage on them, but it just happens. You know, it gets hot. But as far as them compared to other palms I've grown in these containers, they've been doing so much better than any adenidia I've had in this spot, which would end up frying in the sun, usually around mid-July. So these fried some, but not as much. They just, they can take the heat and the dry. So, so, so much better. We haven't had uh, the rain that we normally have. I'm watering them by hand, but 
it's just not the same as actually having, you know, a couple showers a week is all it would take to keep them looking nice, but haven't really been getting that. And with triple digit temps, I'd say they're looking pretty good. I was able to come in and clean out a bunch of the trunk on them. Finally, it was bugging me. These hold on to their leaf bases for much longer than a lot of the other self-cleaning <laughs> palms do. I'm not really convinced that this would even clean itself if you didn't pull that on your own. Although this looks like, yeah, that probably would have cleaned itself out. Good amount of growth from the smaller one that's down here. All of the palms that are out here, the Gassia, Mule Palm, Queen Palms, all of them. I've been using that Perfect Palm fertilizer on them and just sprinkling on the top of their soil about once a month instead of doing liquid fertilizers like I used to. And they get liquid fertilizer whenever I water them by hand. So I think that's made a big difference as far as their growth is concerned. It's like this queen palm, this thing's getting huge. It's getting huge and uh, 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 stringy. Is that the word? It's not splaying out like I would like it to. In fact, I won't be surprised if they take this back to the greenhouse this year and say it doesn't fit because its leaves are just sticking straight up in the air instead of sprawling out. And that happens. You just never know. Some queen palms are just bean poles and some of them you get a really nice growth on them. And unfortunately, you don't really know until they start to get bigger, but it is growing. It's growing very well. The thing's huge. That's definitely my biggest palm tree I think I've ever had, if you're calling the height to be all the way to the tip of the leaves that's holding up there in the sky. And this queen palm wasn't doing much for me. It got repotted this spring. So it just sort of sat still for a couple of months and it finally started to open up a couple of new fronds. It opened up two, just three. So that's not that much of a setback. Usually they grow a lot more for me. I need to get a new pole pruner. I have so many things that are up high that need to get cut down, especially like on the Alexander palm that's down here. I think that the green stuff that's up there, not the green, <laughs> the brown growth up there, it needs to go. It's a self cleaning palm. It'll come up on its own eventually, but they're only out here for a few months a year. So I think it would be nice to just take the pruner and cut them down now that they're fully brown. If they still have green on them, I like to leave them. The Robolini has been doing really well. I like having it over here. It is swelling up. So I've been going through here every now and then just kind of for fun and working on getting the base of this cleaned up and get more of that fun pineapple appearance up there. But I think this is about as high as I can go. They're starting to have some resistance. And if they have resistance, I don't want to pull them out. But when this all gets finished, when that's all fully cleaned out, it's going to be really cute. It's so it's so satisfying reaching in here and pulling that stuff out. It's very messy. That's the only reason I haven't been doing this because it's been so hot out that I'm so sticky from the humidity and the sweat and everything. But I'm just, oh, that's so satisfying. Pulling that stuff out and you're going to get nice new bumps on the trunk up there. That's exciting. I could probably get a good eight inches of trunk cleaned off of that spot right there, I would think. Other palm tree news, Lil Wags putting up some nice new growth. This is a Lil Wags Trachycarpus from Plant Delights, we pod this in the spring. It's probably doubled in size, which isn't saying much because I mean, look at it, it's a tiny little baby, but it's one that I think they said will probably max out at like 10 feet. They don't know for sure, so it's a super dwarf. Not expecting much out of it. Oh, I, uh, I don't think I've updated anybody on this one in a very, very, very long time. Echeveria, Pink Witch. Got this in a plant hall last winter. Had it potted up on my desk and just got it repotted not too terribly long ago into this container. I need to get some rocks or something to put in here so I can straighten because I would like for it to grow with a nice straight habit on it, but it just it wants to go the other direction. I got to figure something else out with that because that's going to be weird if I let it establish like that. It's only been in this container for about a week, maybe two. But I do think if I just get some sticks or something, I think rocks would work better, some nice big rocks and put those all around there. That would help hold that up. Isn't it beautiful though, the variegation on this Aeonium? Absolutely stunning. And it's been doing great with the heat and the sun. But uh, I mean, it's the Aeonium. That's probably not a surprise to anybody. Um, these are new. Not if you've been watching the videos recently, but got these in a Plant Delights haul not too long ago. These are the Galactic Traveler Agaves, Desmontianas. Some of my favorites. I don't know how it's coming across on camera, but I mentioned that video that when they get some more sun, they're going to start to have more of a bluey silver appearance to them. And they really do have that. They've been getting some more sun. They're shiny. It's more of an in-person thing. It's really hard to show on camera, but they have a shimmer to them. Kind of like you see on like an African violet flower, that sparkle. They have that shimmer to them. They're so pretty. I'm really looking forward to those. 
growing up and doing some more. I think that that's about everything. There's not a lot else to update on. I have a bird's nest fern over here that's variegated and starting to look better. It was on the struggle bus. I think I need to repot it. The blizzard, oh, Acacia. I think I've updated on that one in a while. I didn't move it. I think I mentioned the last garden tour that I was thinking I should move it. I'm glad I didn't. It's just been so hot and it's growing well. So I think that I should just leave it alone. Let it stay over there where it's getting some morning sun and afternoon shade. And uh, oh, got some new flowers on the gingers over here. Sweet memory. Aren't those just beautiful? Absolutely stunning. So this year I put in a bunch of the Banrai red curcumas very late in the season, not taking into account that they take an eternity to come up when you plant them from a corn, like corn from a corn, about six weeks. That's a long time. And then you still have to wait for them to flower. I'm going to remember, I say this because I put a reminder in my phone for March next year to order a whole bunch of the Sweet Memory curcumas and do those instead of the Banrai Reds and get them started in March in the grow space so that I can have those spread all over the hill over there. I think that'll be so pretty. Milkweeds starting to do their thing. Lots of flowers on them. Got a little baby Rostrata down there. It's not really a baby. I've had it for a long time, but it acts like a baby. It gets root rot very easily during the winter time. It's been out some new growth. I don't think there's anything else. This is how I've been cooling the phone off. Fan looks like that because that's how I've been cooling the camera off and taking just setting it on top there. I think I saw some nice new leaves on this Florida back here. Oh yeah. Look at these. Nice, beautiful leaves. Look at that one. That's gorgeous. Beautiful variegation on this one. So this spot, I need to do some rearranging. The plants that are over here, I realize are ones that I had just set here temporarily and never actually put them <laughs> where they're supposed to go. They're not even supposed to be on the patio. So I need to, it's just three plants, need to move them so things will be open in front and they actually be able to see that beautiful variegated banana and all the stuff I have planted in front of this queen palm. That might be a good project this week and do some rearranging and work on the drip. It's gonna be a whole bunch of drip stuff going on the next couple weeks, have this whole new line set up. And get that moving out, the parts are rolling in, I can finally finish up that project. Yeah, it's been a good month. Everything's doing really well, especially the hellies. Love them. Love those chacos. Beautiful heliconians. Anyways, yeah, hey, thanks for hanging out. I could go on and on and on. I always forget things. I'm sure I forgot something to mention, so you can just stand back and do a scan. There you go. There's, there's the stuff. Comment down below what's going on in your gardens. Got fun projects going on or just waiting out the heat and <laughs> getting ready to do some fall stuff. That's kind of where I'm at. Just waiting things out to start doing some fall planting. All right, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, a great life, and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most of... Oh, wait a minute. This wasn't here last time we had a garden tour. That's all new. The green wall. I have mixed feelings about it because it's plastic, but it looks better than siding. Uh, what do you think? Comment down below. And as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.